At the risk of sounding corny, I'm going to tell you that the bullet that we have on this table in front of us right here is the bullet of destiny. And that's an awful stout saying for a bullet, isn't it? The bullet of destiny. But that's one that I chose to call it. And the reason I chose to call it the bullet of destiny is because probably no one could have told you back in 1911 that this bullet would be a representative of one of the finest um, war implements, one of the finest handguns, one of the longest lasting, one of the most reliable, one of the most traditional, elegant, and sturdy handguns ever made in the history of human beings. Okay, and that is the bullet of the, yeah, the M1911. And that's what this review is all about. And folks, let me tell you, when I say review, please take that loosely. I am by no means a gun expert. All I do is share information I have and impression of different guns that I've been able to borrow or, or have and pass on to you the way other YouTubers have done for me just to give some information, just in case you're thinking about getting a 1911. So um, I hope that you find these useful. But um, anyway, this is history right here, right here. John Browning came up with this gun. John Browning is the, the inventor of the entire gun. This formula is his. And uh, this particular one here is the original um, model the um the colt 45 there's the colt logo right there right and uh the barrel and everything the um the recoil operated barrel um with the bushing and everything on the end is of traditional design the hand safety the grip safety is of traditional design this shape of trigger is traditional although today they come skeletonized and i'll show you that in a little bit the serrations are always here, and this gun, the 1911, in many different forms, has been in service, and when I say different forms, I just mean different cosmetic effect. The formula and the way the gun operates is universal. You could take a spring out of that and put it into a 1911 of today. Yes, because this gun was in service from 1911 until about 1986 when the military then switched over to the uh, Beretta um, 92. So uh, this is an almost a 100 year old gun and still to this day is highly sought after. This review however, or this impression I should say, is on mine but I wanted to make sure that I got the history of the 1911 made very clear because it is an impressive uh, gun history along with the Browning high power this is a perfect gun right and what has lasted the test of time as it is without having to change to keep up with the times as a matter of fact the time was cast by this what we're doing today was made by this and you will see that when I go wham. Now there's mine. How much of a difference do you see here? Besides one of them's paper. Wait a minute, let me move this over. Let me get that so that I can see it. I should actually look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's practically the same. Now this is Ruger's. This is my Ruger 1911. This is my. This is Ruger's first attempt at 1911s. They didn't make 1911s before. They made bolt action rifles, um, and they got into semi-automatic um, pistols in recent years. But they were mostly a rifle company and um, and uh, revolvers, you know. And then this particular design right here is their absolute first attempt at 1911s and let me say they did so handsomely everything's traditional um, the beaver tail is extended a little more than on this one and that is one of the features that um, is really good for today but when you look at both of them magazine release is in in the right place on both of them right see that? how easy that magazine came out that's beautiful 
The mag release isn't the same in both places. Right positioned right next to the trigger with these curves. Look at the barrels. How each of the barrels has the same contour design. It's this is the same thing. Um, of course, this one had more of a, um, the paddle um, thumb hammer, and this one's more skeletonized. And this trigger is more skeletonized, just to be like today. But this is still a great tribute that they did nearly 100 years later to John Browning's design because it is exactly the same. You could take parts from this and put it in this and this and this. That's timeless right there. Wood grips with the diamond shapes. Right? Only difference here is there's the gold inlay of the Ruger design. That's right there. And of course, the rubber grips did not come on this pistol that you see right here. Those rubber grips. Let me get it there in the focus. Those rubber grips I put on myself just because I like rubber grips. I like to have the nice firm hold and the comfy hold on the gun. And uh, you know what? It's pretty good. You know, it's a very comfortable weapon. Let me get my hand where you can see it. This is what I look like holding the gun. Stick them up. Anyway, um, so it's a beautiful gun. Um, this is my favorite gun. This is This is my little honey right here. Except for my wife, of course. I love my wife. My wife is my ultimate first honey. But this gun is really awesome. And I would protect her with it. So she's got to love it too. But um, these guns are made by practically everybody. And the good thing about 1911s is if that particular manufacturer, and there are hundreds, sticks to the formula of John Browning's design, you pretty much can't go wrong with the gun. Now I say that with an at risk because there are people out there now that are hammering these things out and selling this shit like this, like this, like this, right? And um, they're not paying much attention to detail. And you can tell those when you go into a gun shop and they rattle. You don't hear any rattling here, do you? No, you sure don't because this is made wonderfully. But, um, I'll face it this way again. Um, if they're rattling, uh, you can tell if there's a fit and finish problem. This one here, you know, they, um, the slide is perfect. It's really nice. Um, and just look at the size of that bore. Look at the size of that barrel. You do not want to see that. By the way, yes, folks, there's nothing in the magazine. We're past this by now. Um, but this is a really, really great gun. And if they stick to the design, just about any 1911 is going to be good enough. And I might say that Taurus and Bursa, though people laugh at those guys, they're making an excellent pistol and they have a lifetime warranty. Not many other people have that now, do they? But anyway, I digress. This is the Ruger SR 1911. Um, one of the other things I'll tell you about this gun, as far as the quality and how they make it, is to m ensure a great fit to fit and finish of this pistol, they make the slide and barrel, right? This and this out of the same, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me hold that up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This and this out of the same metal bar stock. They make it out of the same bar stock to ensure these came from each other and work within each other so that they're that precisely fit. You know, a lot of them just make the gun and they'll have slides over here, barrels over here, and they'll just grab from the piles and throw the shit together. Not this. They made sure that the slide and barrel for each one of these things came from the same bar stock. Not many people putting that much detention, attention uh, to detail into their firearms. Let me um, decock it. There's no decocker on a, a 1911. Now, 1911 pistols are designed to be carried in condition one, right? And that is cocked and locked. For those of you who don't know, cocked, right? Hammer back because it is a single action gun. The only thing it does is shoot from a cocked position. One squeeze, one action, boom, right? And locked. That slide is up. And then you carry it in your holster, right? Which this is a tactical holster by Phobus. Look, I like Phobus holsters. 
Anyway, so this is a Phobos holster. This gun's cocked and locked. You draw, it's cocked, unlock it, and rock it. Right? That's it. Draw, safety off, and ready. And that's how it's designed to be carried. So if you're uncomfortable with having a gun that is absolutely ready to fire, um, you might want to go with a double action uh, revolver or something that requires you to squeeze the trigger quite intently in order for the gun to go off. Otherwise, this gun has safeties up the wazuli, and I'll show you this too. Uh, it's really hard for me to find my angle. I'm looking at this upside down, so I apologize for the sh sketchy photography. Um, this here is the, the grip safety. So even if the gun is cocked, right, and unlocked, which it now is, right, the gun is not... Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, I did. I squeezed the grip safety. Let me try that again. Um, the gun is not going to fire because it requires this also to be pushed in here, right? And then the other safety is here. So you should feel plenty safe that the gun's not going to go off in your holster, right? But some people are a little bit uncomfortable with that still. I understand. I totally understand. Um, so just keep that in mind when you have this. And also... Um, for practicality purposes, let me face it towards you. For practicality purposes, this is not a concealed carry pistol. And the reason it's not a good concealed carry pistol is because of its weight, which it's nearly 30. It is 39 ounces. It's almost 40 ounces. It's more than two pounds. And, um, and its size. This is the size of my hand, Right next to this gun and there's still there's still butt and barrel sticking out of there right which means this gun is 39 ounces of long metal sitting under your um your waistband if you're having it in the waistband holster so for concealed carry purposes this is not as comfortable unless it's the winter time again and you're using something like this uncle mike's um shoulder rig you know, where you drape it across your shoulders and it's hanging between your arms. That's one thing. But for inside the waistband carry, that is not as comfortable. Right? However, if you're an open carrier, which is excellent, this is a beautiful you know, a gun that, that, that is this nice and this pretty is a great open carrier in something like this here um, holster. Right? That just hangs off your belt. And, uh, you know, and it looks and it looks really nice. It's a good looking gun, but you can still feel the weight on your hips there. Or if you are going to carry it inside your waistband for short jaunts, something like this here sticky holster, um, which is designed to be shoved inside your waistband, is pretty good because of the comfortable rubbery material, right? You can still carry it condition one, right? But you're not going to be as comfortable. If you're going to carry a gun like this, you want to carry it in condition one, probably pretty much open carry. And I do encourage open carry. Show your Second Amendment preferences. But this gun here also came with two magazines, which let me display the, the magazine drop again for this gun because it is outstanding. Look at this. Just bam. Out it came. See it? All right. Um comes with two magazines, a seven round magazine and this you hear um, eight round magazine which actually looks better in the gun because it's got the black um, it's got the black footing on it and it just looks really cool however I am going to take the um, the I'm going to decock it manually um, just to make sure that nothing happens there I doubt anything's going to happen but there you go if you're curious you can get them anywhere from your lowest quality, uh, $350 or whatever the deal is. And again, you can go right on up to $7,000 if you want to spend that kind of cabbage on a weapon. Uh, I guess that's up to you if you have that kind of money. I personally don't know anyone with that kind of money, but uh, if you wanted to do that, seven grand, that's about that's about par for like the really, really expensive custom 
you know, I mean, there's guns out there that just blow your mind. Check out Wilson Combat online and check out those 1911s and you will find yourself saying these exact words, holy and shit, because they are primo. But again, I'll never see one of those because I am a blue collar type. Um, and that's it. This is the, the, the Ruger SR-1911. Um, guns by, 1911s by Ruger, uh, Smith & Wesson, Springfield, Para Ordnance, Sig Sauer are your, your really good ones that are affordable before they start getting into the stratosphere of stupidity and cost. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to spend a shitload of money uh, unless you have it. So if you want a really good gun, you know, just save up for a while or put it on layaway at budsguns.com and, um, and get your 1911. Uh, you know, they, Bud's Guns, as a matter of fact, has a 90-day layaway. That's how I do it because there's no way I'm getting guns all in one shot. I don't just walk in and drop $500 on anything. So, um, this is it. The Ruger SR 1911. And coming up soon, you're going to see some uh, footage of the gun being shot at targets. And you're going to see a recoil demonstration as well. But anyway, that's it. This is it. The Ruger SR 1911. I love it. You love it. So, everybody's happy. And if you um, have any questions about the Ruger SR 1911 or any of the other guns that I have shown you and discussed in my videos, um, my email address is scrolling across the bottom of the screen at this very moment. And um, so go ahead and, and email me or, or put it in the comments section and I'll be happy to answer any questions or cover anything that you think uh, I could actually cover. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And I'd like to thank the people that have been watching my videos. Um, I do it just as a hobby. I like this. And, um, and so this is it. One last assembly for you. And one good look. The Ruger SR 1911. Classy, beautiful, dependable, and historical. God bless America. And long live our great republic. Okay, this is the Ruger SR 1911. We're going to go bowling here and we're going to shoot some of these pins. So, let's get ready. Well, I missed some. Okay, so now I'm going to do a different kind of recoil demonstration. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have you look sideways on when I'm shooting the gun so you can get some idea um, how a 1911 pistol recoils. Uh, this is a 39-ounce weapon, and you'll see how the weight of this weapon keeps the recoil down. All right. The, the Ruger SR 1911 is condition one again in my makeshift holster situation. This is a sticky holster, by the way. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to show one-handed shooting. And this is just to demonstrate the manageability of the Ruger SR 1911 when I shoot one-handed at the target. Okay, so that was one-handed shooting the Ruger SR 1911. And if you noticed by watching that, I forgot my ears. And yes, my ears are a ringing. So if you're going to shoot that Ruger SR 1911 or any gun, don't forget your ears because that's very important. I forgot that when I did this. 
But anyway, thanks for watching the recoil demonstration of the Ruger SR1911.